Okay, welcome back everyone to our special live SiliconANGLE presentation with Druva special live event. This is the Druva Cloud Tech Preview section with Prem Anathwar Kishran, who's the VP of product. Prem, welcome to this segment and giving the preview of the Druva Cloud platform. We got a demo coming up, but first tell us what is the Druva Cloud platform? First of all, John, great to be here. And uh, let me start off uh, by uh, summarizing what just Preet said earlier. So Druva Cloud Platform brings to market a project called uh, Druva One that we have been working internally for more than 18 months. Um, what this provides is a product uh, that uh, provides a single pane of glass for organizations to protect, govern, and intelligently manage their data irrespective of where that data resides. And uh, if you really think about uh, where the enterprise data is today, uh, going back to the conversation that you had with uh, Matt and Dave, uh, a lot of the data is now distributed and highly fragmented, right? It's not really sitting behind the four walls of the firewall like it used to. And uh, when you think about how do you manage data that is so distributed and uh, decentralized, you have to think about a centralized approach uh, to manage that data. And cloud becomes the obvious choice for managing that data. And uh, that's what Druva Cloud Platform does. It really unifies that management experience by bringing together data across endpoints, infrastructure, SaaS and cloud applications like Office 365, and providing that unified single pane of glass experience again for our customers. And more importantly, um, unlike you know, the solutions that are out there in the market, uh, which really force you to manage data in silos uh, by using different application stacks or management consoles or even uh, multiple logins. Druva provides a single unified interface from where you can actually easily manage this data. I get the unified approach. Let's drill into the um, as a service delivery piece. Why does it matter and what's the impact to the customer? That's a great question. Uh, first of all, uh, we are the only solution in the market that can provide data protection and management as a service. And uh, the as a service piece, uh, you know, there are multiple uh, advantages to it. Let's start with the obvious one. The obvious one is uh, where people can save a lot of money and also save on the total cost of ownership by really eliminating hardware and uh, the infrastructure costs. But when you start thinking about uh, what's going on in the market, you know, with cloud washing and uh, also with people really overusing the term cloud, you have to really think about uh, how your customers would really see the difference between the benefits you would get from an as a service solution versus uh, just software that's hosted in the cloud. And uh, you know, I got to say, when you start looking at uh, people who have gone down the path of hosting software in the cloud, a lot of times they underestimate the cost and complexity that comes with uh, maintaining uh, as well as deploying and supporting software in the cloud. And uh, what the end result is, you know, they get a huge check from the cloud provider <laughs> and then they're all upset and they're, they're like, wait a minute, this is not what I was promised and this is not what I expected. Yeah. Right, and uh, this is again, because if you think about what really goes behind this, when you start putting software in the cloud, you're still leasing infrastructure from your cloud provider, but you, the customer, are responsible for managing the application stack, which means you're responsible for patching software, upgrading it, security, ensuring you know, the service availability with that software. All those yeah. things still fall on you, and that's, that stuff still costs you. Yeah. Right? People don't realize that. Yeah, and what's interesting too with DevOps, we've got this whole infrastructure as code concept, so the cloud is attractive from that standpoint, but there's all these hidden costs around the glue layer, if you will. A APIs, microservices, you still got to put them together in an effective way, which also can be hard. How do you? How does the cloud platform you guys have at Druva help facilitate the customer uh, journey to be simpler to execute if they're all API based or they love DevOps? How does that? How do you guys fit into that? That's a great question again, right? Uh, well, first it starts with the again the as a service model itself, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you think about um, a true software as a solution service like. Uh, software as a service um, solution like Druva, what we do is we really bring together that customer experience. It's not just about um, you know, throwing software in the cloud and using it, as I mentioned earlier. This, you basically have a promise of uh, 
SLA or service guarantee, mm -hmm. right? You also have predictable costs, and you also have uh, you know an underlying architecture that really supports all of that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where you know this notion of APIs and microservices also comes in. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about microservices, uh, for example, that really provides our customers to scale pretty much um, infinitely, right? Um, to millions of users or zettabytes of data without having to worry about bottlenecks in performance or reliability or even resiliency. And that is huge, right? That's I mean, huge. this kind of promise, again, you get with the cloud, but also with a true as a service uh, experience in, yeah. a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a true cloud world. Well, the big news here in this event we're doing with, digitally with you guys is also the funding, but also the introdu introduction of the, the Druva Cloud Platform Preview. So let's get into the demo. You want to walk us through the solution? Absolutely. Let me switch over and uh, walk you through the demo. So John, what you see here is the uh, dashboard that an administrator would see once they log into the Druva Cloud uh, platform management console. As you can see here, uh, the dashboard gives you a quick summary of the total data protected and managed by Druva with a clear breakdown of that data based on different data sources, such as your cloud applications, data on your endpoints, file servers, as well as virtual servers. Mm -hmm. Again, bringing together that single pane of glass management experience across all your data sources. Once again, this is huge, right? When you start thinking about the legacy solutions, they offer this in piecemeal. We're able to bring this unified experience and uh, bring, being able to do that on a single management console, allowing our customers to protect and manage and govern all this data. And when you look at uh, the service utilization piece here, that really tells you the value an organization can get from this platform not just in terms of uh, you know, your classic backup and restores, but also in terms of how uh, their internal teams can use this platform to solve their use cases around e-discovery mm -hmm. or compliance. As you scroll down here, you can see um, some of the other elements of uh, SaaS and you know, the software as a service benefits that I talked about earlier. Things like um, service availability, supportability, and also a great user and learning experience. So when you talk about service availability, as you can see here, you can pretty much uh, get a bird eye view of where your data is located anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. and also the operational status of uh, the data center or region. And once again, Druva is very uniquely positioned in the market when it comes to being able to spin new data centers anywhere in the world within a very short notice, maybe in just minutes or hours. And the reason, again, we're able to do that is because we're not constrained by the limitations of a software solution where you have to still install that on some server and bring up your application stack. Mm -hmm. We can pretty much orchestrate this anywhere in the world where we also obviously leverage the global footprint from our public cloud partners like Amazon and Microsoft. So both clouds are there. It looks like it's there. I see ransomware on that school. Um, is there any kind of a Steve Jobs, one more thing, kind of feature you can show us? There, there is definitely uh, <laughs> you got a, that. one more thing. There's always the one more thing. Uh, so let me get into that. <laughs> and um, before I go into that, I want to uh, mention one more thing, and then I'm going to dive into that real quick. So what you see here in the central panel here um, are also the different microservices, right? So again, the microservices uh, provides a great way for us, uh, for our customers, not only to scale to that. Uh, you know, petabytes and, uh, of data and millions of users, it also gives Druva a great way to bring new products and services to our customers with agility and great go-to-market efficiency, right? So our customers can easily consume something that we bring to them right off of this console, mm -hmm. right? They can subscribe to it, just like you would go to Amazon today and log into that portal and consume, let's say, a storage service like S3. Our customers can come to Druva and consume data protection at scale with a single click. Hmm. Now with that, I'm going to go to the Steve Jobs question. Yeah. There's always one more thing. One more thing. So, um, you know, one of the challenges- Saving uh, the best for last. <laughs> always, always. Uh, in fact, if you think about, uh, you know, the administrative challenges a lot of uh, uh, people go through when they, you know, manage products and go through the day-to-day -day administration, 
they always struggle with uh, navigating to different sections of the product or the product documentation because that's how enterprise products are. They're fairly complex. They actually have multiple mm -hmm. workflows. And then especially when you think about uh, remote offices or locations where you have employees with limited IT skill set, then you have to think about how do they really get started, right? How do they really know where to go? How do you get from point A to point B? And uh, we took this problem statement to our engineering team and uh, told them to solve it. <laughs> and our brilliant engineers came up with uh, this really cool search utility that we are calling as CAS, or context-aware search. And Jaspreet sort of alluded to this earlier in the day. And if you look at what this does, as I start uh, searching for any keyword, this is the kind of experience I'm sure you and I have seen uh, with consumer websites. <laughs> Let's say you go to a shopping site like Walmart or Amazon, and when you're searching for whatever you're shopping for, the search tool uses your history, mm -hmm. also has a, an, an intelligence of what other people have been looking for, and it comes back with results, which you can then... Kind of like Google search for the enterprise. Exactly. But think about this, though. What this is doing now is Drua is bringing that consumer-like search experience into the enterprise. Yeah. And now we're using that to solve this problem of administrators having to navigate through different parts of the product. Yeah. So what you're able to do with this is now, with a single click, you can easily navigate to any part of the product or the product documentation. So as an example, I'm just going to click on, oops, I'm just going to click on, um, go back to that. I'm going to go back to legal hold. And I'm going to click on the manage legal hold link. And as you can see, with a single click, it takes me directly into that section of the product from where I can manage legal holds. Let's try another example. In this case, let's assume I'm not really ready to manage anything yet, but I still want to learn about Office 365 and how Drua integrates with Office 365. So as you can see, the search results have also been cleanly categorized into two sections. You have actions for configuration, mm -hmm. and you also have information links. So now I'm clicking on this link, which allows me to quickly go to our documentation page and see how Druva can integrate with Office 365. So once again, the goal here is uh, to make that administrative experience easier, intuitive, yeah. and allow them to navigate to any part of the product or product documentation with one single click. Truly a single pane of glass for the user. Discovery, learning, get all the knowledge center in there. Congratulations. So the question is, is that when can people get started? Great question. Uh, people can get started today with our um, end user data protection, as well as SaaS data protection and uh, the infrastructure data protection products. There are free trials available at uh, Druva.com. The cloud data, uh, the Druva cloud platform will be available uh, towards the later half of this calendar year in okay. Q4, but we're also starting um, early trials as yeah. early as next month. Prem, thanks so much. Great demo. Uh, congratulations on the, on the tech preview. Great demo. And uh, our next segment will be talking about the $80 million financing with the CFO and the big time investors on our next segment. We'll be right back. <laughs>